Is online business just another get rich quick scheme? Is it a real business opportunity that you should be jumping into all the different things that people are saying, like get rich quick, live a laptop lifestyle, put your digital product up and you're gonna make thousands, you're gonna have all this time freedom back. Are these all real things or is online business just another get rich quick scheme? Well, I'm a young entrepreneur in the business sphere and I'm going to dive into this question in this interview Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome to the episode. Today we're gonna to be covering the downfalls of online business, the get rich quick feeling uh, that's going around in the marketplace, some of the distrust, the scam culture. Does online business actually work? Is it a real business um, that you should be jumping into? The upsides of this online business sphere and why it's such a booming economy and then a little bit about ourselves, how we got into this sphere. So let's get right into it. Yeah, and if you guys don't know who we are or you haven't been really introduced to our content, maybe we can just start a little bit with some of that little introduction about us. We are a father and son team. And to me, it's a you know great pleasure to be able to work with my son. And we bring different gifts, talent, experiences into the online space. And just a little bit about what we do. We have a done-for-you business service where we supply and serve people with, you know, a, an entire marketing system for their own small businesses or their coaching businesses. And at the same time, we also help, you know, aspiring entrepreneurs build their own online coaching businesses through coaching and courses and, uh, you know, digital marketing systems that they want to put in, 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 in for themselves. They have knowledge and experiences and all that. So, you know, to me, uh, to work with my son, uh, I never dreamed it was going to be even possible. I didn't know how that could even work. And it just so happened, you know, I'm learning this and he's learning that. And, you know, we start having conversations about it and all of a sudden it just made sense and it was a perfect fit for us to work together. So we jumped in, you know, building this business and it's been amazing to me. It's been a great pleasure regularly conversing and connecting with my son and serving clients at the exact same time. And again, we bring in, we complement each other with our strengths and experiences. So it's been awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's super fun. Uh, obviously working like with family and business. Um, and it, honestly, I think it's how it was designed to be because when you work with family and business, like you're also looking out for each other's interests. You're not going to get stabbed in the back, hopefully, <laughs> or at least it's a lower chance. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like why do people listen to our coaching? Why do people listen to us? Um, we're also Christian, um, we're faith-based business owners. Um, and a big thing that separates us from other, uh, gurus is that we're, we just did this transition. It wasn't a 10, 20 year ago transition. And we weren't like just getting into the online, uh, business wave, and we were lucky to hit the wave at the right time and we got lucky and blew up and it wasn't like that. We learned all the different skills and tools. We just did this. So we know what you guys are going through. Um, we know the struggles and pains of starting an online business and even just a business in general um, from scratch. And so, yeah, that's what we're going to be covering today. But first, I actually just wanted to transition a little bit and ask you, um, dad, how did you get into this online business sphere? What brought you into it? And yeah, just tell us a little bit of your story with that. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, in 2017, 2018, I was already, you know, looking at transitioning. I, for 20 years plus, I already had done a lot of marketing, but the marketing looked different. You know, I was doing a lot of live events around the world. So in person, you know, large scale events, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 people, events um, and it took me around the world it was for non non for profit and for profit organizations and businesses you know events of all kinds um, and you know I learned a lot of skills along the lines uh, along the uh, along the way with that I learned about marketing I learned about promotion I learned about team team building all these things that were amazing and powerful and then what happened is I started this one time I was teaching about how to run a live in-person event. And there was around, you know, 30, 40, 50 people in that room. And it was for like five hours. And after the five hour training and people paid to be there. And after that five hour training, a friend of mine that was in the room, 
came up to me afterwards and he said, you know, you could actually get paid a lot of money from what you know. And I said, well, explain, what does that mean? He goes, well, I'm going to send you a link for you to watch this training. It's a couple hour training and you could actually create courses on this and you could go online. And I, I kind of knew about it, I, you know, online courses, but I really had no clue. And so I watched the course a couple hours later, I buy it on the spot. And the very next day I take that, you know, course and I'm taking it very, very serious. You know, if you charge for a product and, you know, a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars and above, then you start, you know, you your skin is in the game. So I'm going to pay attention. So the next day, not, I, I, I paid attention and I gathered even other people to come and pay attention with me because, you know, I knew that I needed help. I knew already with 20 years of experience that you can't do it alone. And other people have different gifts and talents and strengths that you could actually, you know, leverage and build something even better and faster. So that's what I did. And so I just started eating up the content. And that was a it really eye opener how this works and how powerful the online space is. And so it was about two things for me. It was about impact, you know, reaching people and serving people and helping people. But it was also another component. It was about income. It was, you know, I learned that in the online space, you can make way more income because, you know, you're reaching a lot more people. You're not just stuck in a little, you know, cocoon of uh, the audience or the, the people that you know in a little small space, it's the, it's the online space. And so the reach was, you know, overwhelming to me. And so that really changed my life. You know, even though I just built on the foundations that I had and I went a lot further. So that was a little bit of my story, how I got into this space, but maybe I could ask you, Michael, cause I know that you got in this space and you got, you know, you, you went to some of those courses with me, but you went another direction and something else impacted you on creating content. So maybe you can actually just share with me and with the audience, how did you get in the online space? Yeah. So, uh, how I got into it, I was actually a part of, and I still am, um, more in a limited capacity now, but I, I was a part of, uh, YWAM, which stands for youth with a mission. It's a Christian missions organization. Um, and I actually was with their media team. So, um, as I was growing up, I got into, videography, photography, uh, media editing, all that stuff, marketing. Um, and I was a part of the media team. And we actually were really feeling like we should be reaching out to people on TikTok. So this was just after COVID. So TikTok was like blowing up. There's all these 14 to 25 year olds scrolling through their phone on TikTok. And so we saw this opportunity to really reach people with the Bible, with Jesus um, through TikTok. So we actually had some a team come in that had some success in this area on TikTok come in and train us. Um, and we had a team about six to 10 people. Um, after we got trained, we just started posting consistently for about a year. We did this and me and another guy, we actually headed up the TikTok team, if you will. And we actually, as a team, grew our reach to about 950,000 followers. And we were just praying for people, sharing Bible verses, encouraging people with um, the Bible and prayer and all this stuff through TikTok. And it was super cool to see all the reach we had, um, but it was really the strategies that I learned through the media and how you can create video, how you can capture attention, how to do proper hooks, how to just make content that is capturing and watchable. And I really opened me up to how powerful having an audience is and what you can do with it. So I grew my TikTok. My personal account was, I think, almost the 60,000 followers. Um, and it was just posting very consistently um, and doing that. But what I noticed was, what do I do with this audience? I have these people watching me. But what can I do? How can I go a level deeper with this audience? So then um, I was like, oh, I feel like I want to help people get free from pornography. So then I actually make a whole course on helping people get free from uh, lust and pornography and all this stuff. And I just put up a free ebook first. I think I posted a couple videos like give them an encouragement. And I was like, hey, if you want the free ebook, 
go in my bio and download it. So I put up these couple videos within like two or three days, 400 people download it. And I'm like, wow, this is like crazy. And well, so then I'm like, that, before you go into that, I would love to like, how yeah. many people when you went, cause I, I saw you, I saw you, I saw you putting out content. You were putting out like four or five pieces of content every single day. I'm talking about like TikTok, you know, short form content. Yeah. So um, how many people would watch a video every single time that you posted? Yeah. So like on the, I would say average was probably like 10,000. But on the low end, maybe a couple thousand on the high end, like I got all the way up to 300, 400,000 a video. Wow. But, but yeah, it was more just like the, cause the real power we're, and we're going to be talking about this in future, um, videos, but the real power is the email list. So that's why I really wanted to capture people's emails. Cause I can go a lot deeper because on social media, all these platforms, you may have subscribers, you may have followers, but you don't really own those subscribers or followers. It's all up to the algorithm and these platforms and what um, is shown to them. So that's why I wanted to bring them to an email list. I can talk to them all the time. I can talk to them when I want to. I can reach 100% of my audience when I want to. And so that's why I made that free ebook. And I also wanted to just see if people were interested um, in that topic. So that's why I did that. But I actually started making all this porn free stuff. And then uh, you actually came up to me and were like, hey, I'm doing uh, this online business stuff. And you invited me into it to partner. And yeah, so that's really where it started. And it's been going on from there. So yeah. Yeah. And you bring other things to the table that I don't have. I mean, you're very strategic. You strategize really, really well. And you're always learning. You're always growing. I think you know, in the online space, so much, so many things are moving and, and changing all the time. And if you're not willing to grow and change alongside with the things that are moving and, and taking place online, I think you're going to always be stuck. And, you know, I came from the, the, the time of where we were actually marketing and promoting, we were buying ads for those stadium, for the large events. I was doing newspaper. I was doing TV commercials. I was doing bus stops, you know, the big bus, you know, the, you know, when a bus would come around, you put a, a small billboard on that bus. I came from that time period where you were actually buying it and it was more, mostly spaghetti, you know, you know, throwing it out there and hoping that someone will pay attention. I did movie theaters. I did everything you can imagine. And so I learned about marketing. I learned about target audiences. I learned about leads and all that stuff. Um, but things are much different now. And so um, maybe Michael, because I know that you you're always growing. You're all, I mean, you're bringing up new things to me almost every day, if not weekly, for sure. So maybe what are things that are going on with the online space? I mean, we could even start with like 2020 when, when things really just super, super changed everything. So maybe you can start there a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So really what I'm like trying to like say what you're asking is like, why is online business like such a booming economy. Yeah. Um, and really, like you said, it really changed in 2020. Um, it expedited like the whole process of going into online business. And so what I noticed was once 2020 happened, obviously COVID happened, everything moved to Zoom and online and video like this, where we're just talking, like even us, like this would never be a thing like five, six years ago where we're in the same city and we're doing an episode over Zoom like this. And so it was already going in that direction, but in 2020, it really changed because you couldn't leave your house. Everything was over video camera. So then it became more comfortable just for people to learn from home. Um, and then I also just felt like, like my generation specifically, they were like, what is the point of college? Like, why am I going to college? I don't really even know why I'm going. Like I'm just going for general studies or a super generic major that I don't really need um, unless you're being like a doctor or a lawyer or a surgeon or something that like really needs that training. What is something that I can just learn, get results quickly? I don't have to wait four or eight years to get that job if I even get that job. So that's what I noticed is like people are just now more comfortable learning online and getting more results driven like stuff in like content wise. 
Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. That's why it's such a booming economy. If you want to add to that, is there anything else? Why yeah, you I think, think, I think the ROI, system? I think the ROI for, for training and skills and all of that, I think that is a, a big game changer. You know, when you go to school, you get a certificate, you might get a job in that field. You might, and, and even statistics, and I don't have the, you know, up-to-date statistics, but obviously higher education is on the decline. But, you know, skill development is not on the decline. People are still wanting to learn and grow and they are looking for the ROI. So what's my rate of return? And I think even considering going to college and university, you know, parents should actually be asking that question. When you finish this, you know, after spending 20, 30, I remember my first year of going to school, college, I pay, I had a $25,000 in, I was in debt, $25,000, you know, room and board and all that Ouch. stuff you know, 25 grand. And then I went the second year. And so what's my ROI? Everyone should be, every parent and every kid should be asking, what's my ROI? You know, we get in calls all the time where people are considering buying a coaching program from us or, you know, someone that we actually served. And, you know, they want to ask that question, what's my ROI? And I think that's a big question uh, to answer. And, you know, I'm not going to down college or university. I, you know, there, there are things that are needed for, you know, the, that training. But I remember one time I was invited to speak at a college on events, live in-person events. And so I taught, you know, I did like an hour and a half of training, teaching. And uh, I did it because a friend asked me to come and, and do that because he was actually a teacher, a professor at that school. So there I am teaching and, I, you know, he takes me out to lunch afterwards and he's like, man, you know so much about events. I was taking down notes myself. And, and I said, oh, well, tell me a little bit of your story with events. You know, how did you get in, in events? You know, you're teaching this. So how did you, you know, how did you get in this? And he goes, well, I don't. I just teach it. So I go, so you teach it, but you have no experience on it. So you're reading from a book. But you have no personal stories. You don't know the pain, the sweat, the blood to put on a live in-person event. You have no clue. And you said, yeah, I don't. Well, that, I was kind of dumbfounded right there. So people are going to school right now, colleges, university, with people who have know about it, but they really don't know about it. They've never gone through the thick yeah. of it. They've never gone through the blood, sweat, and tears of learning it, experiencing it. They have information that is so lower level, it's not even funny. I was teaching stuff yeah. from my experiences, from putting on those events. And I know the pressure. I know the stress. And I can teach about it because I've gone through it. I have results in it. There's no results in it. So they're teaching from a book, which can be in many ways outdated. So I think the online space is so powerful because they're learning from someone who knows it in a very deep way, maybe even mastered it. And it's not like you need to be a complete expert, but you do have to have some sort of result in a thing to be able to teach someone how to do a thing, whatever that may look like. So, you know, I think yeah. everything's changed when, when it comes to the online space, digital knowledge. Think about this. We are in the knowledge, information, digital space. And every industry in the past made money based on that age, that age. You know, there was the industrial age, the agricultural age, the distribution age, you know, the technological age. We are now currently in the information knowledge and uh, in the digital age right now. So if we want to make money yeah. and if we want to make impact, we have to know where we're at. Some of those things that were in the past, they're outdated. They don't work. I would consider this the number one way to learn, to grow develop skills and including build the business. So yeah, those are some yeah, of my reasons sure. why I think this is so powerful. I know you, you probably have more. Yeah. And like, honestly, what I've noticed is a lot of people are like saying this type of thing, like online business is where it's at. And what I've noticed is it's created like uh, a distrust in people because they're seeing all this stuff. They're seeing the, it's even why you clicked on this video. Like you just, you might think, oh, is online business just another get rich quick scheme? 
what are all these gurus saying the same things for? And honestly, there is like in every market, there's bad uh, companies that are saying bad things and not delivering good results. Like just like when you go to a restaurant, some have bad reviews, some have good reviews. Um, but because of that, it's created a distrust in the general public that we've seen. Um, and so that's why we wanted to tackle this question. Is online business a business that you should be getting into? Is it a real business? Is it just another get rich quick scheme? So with that being said, what in the market have you noticed is some of the holes? Cause we're specifically talking about like e-learning and that type of industry coaching, consulting. What are some of the holes that you've noticed in the market? Um, I've said a few, like, obviously there's some of these like so-called gurus that might not even know fully what they're talking about or have experience in it. And they're just going up, putting up some random videos, charging five, 10,000 bucks. People are going on there, buying it, and then they get burned and they didn't really learn anything. So what are some of the holes that you've noticed? Yeah, I think that is one of the main things that I've seen is that people you know, they just fall for the trap. They, they might even be good marketers. Someone marketed, said something that really speaks to my pain. You know, people go online yeah. for pain. They want to relieve pain. I mean, think about it. I have a headache, Google, you know, give me an answer. I have a stomach ache, Google, give me an answer. And so people are going online really for two main, main reasons. Number one, they want to be, they want, uh, they want to be entertained. So that's why some of the shorts and all that stuff really takes off. But they also want to be educated. Yeah. So I have a problem, I have a pain, and then I want to solve it. And so people go on there for solving their pain, their problem. They're feeling stuck in some capacity. And so someone might market really, really well, but they don't have the fulfillment on the other side of what they promised. And so I think one, that's one of the main holes that I've seen is you know, building trust, building credibility. And when someone's considering, you know, buying a product, buying a coaching program or building a business, you know, have social proof, you know, have that because a lot of people are skeptical. They've been burned. Like you said, yeah. Michael, they've been burned. They don't trust. And I, rightfully so. I, I actually, when I get on calls with people that are prospects, I, I don't hammer the point. Like, it's okay if you don't trust me. It's okay that you, you know, had bad experiences. So you actually have to be prepared. If you're building a business, you have to be prepared to go, well, what's different about you? What makes you stand out? Yeah. What makes your method different? And so building that credibility, that trust over time, it's not going to be get rich quick scheme, all that stuff. It doesn't work. Now, can you make a lot of money in this space? Absolutely. Does it go quick? I, I don't think so. Unless you have the skills already established, which probably is not the case. You have to develop those yep. skills. You have to de develop marketing skills, sales skills, developing, understanding messaging and communication, you know, all of that and building other, other components that are, are really important. But um, it, can you make a great impact and make a great income here? Absolutely. But you have to build trust with the, that audience, with, you know, your tribe, your outreach, all that stuff. And I say this, if you're starting out, go and serve someone first with the results. That's probably, and we can hit that later on, but you know, I, I did it for free with people, for people. Yeah. I, did, I wasn't going to charge them. I was going to do it for free or next to nothing. I charged them 250 bucks for six months of training or 500 bucks. You know, when I did it for free first, then if I got them results, okay, let's charge 250. And then if I got them results in 500, then I got them results in 1,000. I just kept bumping it up to, to new potential prospects. And what I was doing is I was actually just learning how to teach. I already knew how to teach, but I was learning how to teach in the online space. So I started with zero, charging zero. And other people might have thought, what? Why would you spending six months worth of your time and not getting paid? Well, actually, I was learning what was missing in my coaching. I was also yeah. finding out what their pain points and how I could solve them. Uh, and they're not going to get mad at me. What do they pay? Nothing. So I just learned through time. I think this is an important part. If you're starting out, do it for free. You know, what do you think, Michael? Yeah. And I would, that's super good, but I would, I want to go back to what you were saying about like, it's almost called skill stacking. 
type of thing. So I even thought this when we even started online business stuff. I was like, oh, this is like a booming thing. We're probably just going to make money super fast. And obviously we didn't like at the beginning, I think it was like at least the first six months or something. We made like maybe a couple thousand bucks yeah. and under five we were like a little bit. Yeah. Like we were a little bit shocked and then we realized it's really is just like any other business. It's not a get rich quick scheme. Um, and you have to learn the skills. Like, it's just like, like, for example, I played basketball growing up. Like, I'm not just going to walk into the gym when I'm 12, 15 years old, never picked up a basketball and just expect to sh just nail every single three, three point shot when I get in there. Like, I have to learn how to dribble. I have to learn how to uh, drive. I have to learn how to shoot. I have to learn positioning. I have to learn all the rules of the game. Like there's so many, I have to learn the right mindset to be successful on the court. And it's just like that with online business and really any business. Like you have to learn all the skills to stack and that's when you will start to be successful. And then just like you said, once you have those skills, you've been able to give someone results, then you can start charging that higher price and getting people um, actual results and make a career out of it. But yeah, is there anything you want to add yeah, in the sphere of skill stack? When it comes to skill stacking, I think that was a, it's still a very important thing that you and I are always talking about. So like when I first started, I bought that course. Well, that really yeah. was an eye opener, but it didn't teach me about completely email marketing. It gave me Everything. just a taste of what's, what it should I should put together, but it, it didn't teach yeah. me messaging. You know, we had to buy courses and programs on messaging and buy books on messaging. We had to learn about, you know, funnels and the different types of funnels. We had to learn about VSLs and challenges. And, you know, we had to learn about webinars and how those work and then pitching, how to pitch properly. All these skills, we, we, what we started to do is like, let's buy that course. Let's get into that coaching program. Let's learn that skill. And, and fortunately yeah. for us, we, did, we already had friends and connections. So not only did we buy the courses and buy the books and attend the coaching programs and the masterminds, which was a big investment, but I think believing in yourself to develop those skills, not thinking that it's overnight, but you need the reps and you need the knowledge. You need the reps and you need the knowledge because the more reps you do, the more things you're like, oh, I'm not that good at that part. So you're either going to learn that skill or you're going to leverage that skill by hiring someone or partnering with someone. And uh, I mean, that's what I've done with you too, Michael, because you have skills that I don't have. You have, you know, perspectives that I don't have and vice versa. So we actually complement yeah. each other very well. But at the same time, we are part of coaching programs. In fact, right now we're part of the same coaching program. We paid for it separately and we're learning together. And we're talking about that and this and this and that. And I think that is really important to develop the skills properly so that you can become excellent, that you can serve people excellently. So all of that is yeah. really, to me, has been one of the most important things. And we kind of we, we kind of nerd out a little bit of like, oh, we should try that or we could do that. And we because we know so many plays, if you will, then we can actually go like we kind of can create our own little thing that's not been done yet because you learn so many things. So it's just like you said, basketball or playing music, playing an instrument. You're like, oh, that, there's only eight keys to a piano. There's only eight keys, yeah. but so many songs, so many ways to make that music. And so once you learn that skill, you can do it in so many different ways that fits you, that serve you, that serve your prospects and so on. So skill stacking been huge, has been huge for us. Yeah, that's, yeah, definitely one of the, probably the most important things in online business, but I want to transition a little bit. So we talked about why online business is a booming economy, maybe why you should jump into it, the holes we've noticed in the market. But now I want to ask you for the people that are watching this video, they're, they're watching this video. They're excited now to jump in online business. They're like, oh, sweet. There is some people that are scammy, but there also is some good coaches out there that actually do want to help me. If I'm a person sitting here, I haven't started online business yet. I'm thinking about it. What would you say are the first steps 
that I should do right now after watching this video? What should I do to jump into this online business sphere? Yeah, that's a great question. So number one would be you have to uh, choose a niche. So choosing a niche, you know, and I, I don't know, you know, I'm just going to assume you've never heard this before, but you know, the riches are in the niches, they say. And I, I believe that wholeheartedly. So you have to pick an area, an industry, a market that you're going to serve. A prospect has a certain pain point and you have certain results. So that is really important. So that's part of picking your niche. So who is your ideal client? You know, what are their pain yeah. points? their problems, where are they stuck? And then what results do you have? How can you actually serve that problem? You know, a lot of people look at it um, very differently. They go, well, like I have experiences and I have knowledge, which is a part of it, but it's actually not the way to serve the market with you, you know, you first and then they second. No, it's them first yeah. and then you second. So I would pick a market, I would pick a niche with what is the problem in the market it's always based on the problem in the market and what value can i bring to that person in that market with my skills with my knowledge with my expertise with the results that i can give them because it's all about results remember people google for the problem so if they google for the problem what problem are they looking for that you could actually help serve now create yep. a coaching program a course a digital product you know, on serving that, serve them. Yeah. So you really should so obsess about their problem. I remember reading a book uh, last year. That was a great book. It was by the founder of Lululemon, Chip Wilson, I think his name is. And he obsessed about the problem of his prospect. He obsessed about all their, their, their thoughts, you know, who they are, demographic and also psychographics. So demographic is, you know, their income, their age and all that stuff, but also their psychographics, their behaviors, their pain, their problem. And so he obsessed and I think he named her, her his ideal avatar. He named her Becky or something like that. But he's like, she's 32 yeah. years old. She's not married. She's single. She makes over $200,000 a year. And she's looking to be efficient with her time. So if that's the case, then he can charge $100 for yoga pants. And she wants to go for a workout in the morning and go to work in the afternoon in the exact same pants. And so he created the business, Lululemon, based on the problems and really knowing that uh, the avatar and their, their issues so that he can solve them. And so if I were to start with this one, I would say, choose a niche that serves a potential prospect. That would be number one. But well, what about you? I know you're yeah. really good at this one. So why don't you tell me the next most important thing? If they're starting out, what would it be? Yeah. So I would say uh, second thing, super important is start building an audience. Um, this one was something that we struggle with at the beginning. We put together these programs. Um, we put a, together a webinar. We spent money on ads and we realized we have zero audience. There's no one that even cares about listening to us. And that also goes into figuring out your niche and your messaging and making sure you're talking to the right person. But also, just like I did with that TikTok audience, I built that audience. I didn't even do it on purpose, honestly. I was just doing it to talk about Jesus and the Bible. But I was building an audience of people that cared about what I said. So that's what you need to do. You need to Literally just, you're going to suck at the beginning, to be honest. You're going to be so bad at making content, but you're going to get better just by doing it. Um, there's a phrase that it says, imperfect action is perfect action. So just by you starting, that is actually the right thing to do because you'll start posting and you'll be really rough at the beginning. You won't know how to do a hook. You won't know how to deliver your content properly. You won't know how to close it out. Um, and you won't know what to do with a call to action or any of these terms I'm saying. But you will start to figure out, oh, I posted that video and that one got views and people liked it and they seemed to watch it and they were commenting. Maybe that's like the audience that I should be talking to. And we even discovered this as we started posting a few years ago. Um, we started posting with like sales content. We're like, maybe we should just talk about sales. And then we talk about sales gets no views. And then we're like, okay, well, that didn't seem to work. Maybe we'll start talking about the Bible and how the Bible relates to business. 
and that blows up. And we're like, okay, well, people seem to like the Bible and business and mindset and all that stuff. So we start talking about it more on our social media. And then that's how the account starts growing. So really, you just need to start doing it. A lot of people that are in, honestly, any business in industry that I see is they get stuck in analysis by paralysis. So they're just sitting there thinking about what they should do. They're thinking about how they can uh, start online business or start a podcast or start a YouTube channel. And they're thinking about it. Stop thinking about it and just go do it because that's when you will actually start growing an audience and you'll figure out what people actually care about. You're not going to figure out what people care about by thinking about it. Yeah, I would actually say, you know, finding your niche and also building an audience, man, they're so close together that, yeah. you know, which one comes first, the chicken or the egg? Because here's the thing. If you have an audience, you can sell them anything because they know, like, and trust yeah. you, you know, so does it matter the niche or does it matter the audience? This is a tough one. You know, you should serve yeah. people with a certain thing um, in a certain way with certain results, but the audience is so key to building a business. And a lot of, I, you know, it bothers me when gurus online, and this is part of the scam. They say, well, you don't need an audience. You can do it with no audience. I'm like, no. Or they just don't mention that part. Right. Or they totally skip over Or they the just part. don't mention the part about how you need an audience. They just say, put up a digital product, put together this thing and then put it up and you can live a laptop lifestyle making millions of dollars on the beach. Like that's what most people say. <laughs> which is, you know, which is, they're not fully lying, but they they're need not to fully have lying, an but you do need an audience. A, yeah. yeah. Do they have an audience? Oh, you, how did you get that audience? How did, how did you get me? Oh, you spent money on ads or you built it over time. Yeah. And I think, you know, yeah. I'd like to be upfront with people. You need an audience. So number one, for sure, yeah. you, you should choose a niche. And number two, you should build an audience. And there's, you know, there's so much to that conversation that we're just kind of, you know, giving broad strokes to this. But these are two key parts. What about the next one, Michael? Yeah. Do you have another thought on that? Yeah. So we kind of talked about this in uh, the past section. But the next part would be serve someone. Like once you start building that audience, you figured out that niche, go start helping somebody for free, for really cheap, someone that would not be mad if you did not do a good job or you didn't fully know what you were doing. Just go start helping people, go serve someone in that market, um, do it for free if you have to, and just go start getting results. So then you also have social proof, you also have testimonials, and you have been through the trial of what works, what doesn't work. Um, but yeah, that's what I'd say. Go serve someone for free and just start yeah. doing it. Yeah. And another one and that what I about, think, yeah, another one for me yeah, that I think is really important. I know you would come into agreement with is to get a mentor and get a coach. And number one yeah, would be choose a niche. Number two, build your audience. Number three, serve. And even just having the heart to serve and number four, yeah. get a mentor. If you have the heart to serve, I, I, let me say this. If you have the heart to serve, then it's not about the money, it's about serving and money follows the serving. But if I'm always looking yeah. just for the transaction, I'm not going to over deliver. I'm not going to do it excellently. I'm just going to take your my, the money and run. And if you have yeah. the heart to serve, you're going to want to have, have give them success and have them do have results. And then the social proof and the money and all that stuff gets goes along with it. That's business. You know, and the last yeah. one I think is so key, which is. I mean, it, it, it's what we're doing now. It's what we have done from yeah. the very beginning is get a mentor and get a coach. And so, of course, you have to do your due diligence on, you know, do they have the skills that you're looking to develop? Do they have the yep. success that you're looking to have? And and can they teach you? Do you like their style? Do you like, you know, their values? Because if I don't like their values and they might have the skills, I'm probably going to skip out on that one because, yeah. you know, Proximity is so powerful for me. I want to learn from people who have my values, who have Christian values, who appreciate uh, family and want to build yeah. maybe a family business. So they're not just, you know, I think that's great if they want the Lamborghinis, more power to you. But I could care less about the, the Lamborghinis and all that uh, posh lifestyle. What I care about mostly is creating experiences for my family. I want to give to missions. I want to go to missions on my, 
I want to take my family to mission trips. And so I care more about that than than what they are presenting. So values to me are really, really important. And getting that mentor and coach yeah. has revolutionized my life. We're always talking about who, what coaching program should we buy next? What, what course yeah. should we get into next? What book should we be buying and learning? And sometimes we're reading the exact same book. So to, to us is probably one of the most important things, right? Yeah, 100%. And I would say a huge thing about getting a mentor or a coach, like most, it's weird because some people kind of forget this in like every other sphere of life. But like, if I'm playing basketball, I have a coach. If I'm, and I want to do something well, I'm going to get a coach. If I'm doing weightlifting, I hire a coach. If I'm learning how to public speak, I hire a coach. If I want to be a comedian, I hire a coach. Like every other sphere of life has a coach. But then for some reason, people think they can just get into online business and start posting content, but they can do it without a coach, which you actually can, but it's going to take so much longer. Like you will skip so much learning curve by getting a coach, getting a mentor, and you're going to build those relationships with the people in the groups, which we ourselves have seen huge returns on just by being in those groups and getting those relationships. Um, but yeah. And a, one more thing I would add when you're like deciding on a coach is I would look at their lifestyle. So for example, w do you want to have that coach's lifestyle? So there's a guy named Alex Hermosi. You might not know him. He's super popular right now on social media. He built one of his first businesses to about $400 million per month. This was one of his first businesses that him and his girlfriend at the time built up. It was called Gym Launch. And they built up this huge business, $400 million per month, but they were working like dogs. Like they ended up actually selling the business because he couldn't keep up with that lifestyle of working that hard. Like they were living off very minimal sleep. They're working pretty much 24 seven. Like they're having to fulfill all these orders, all this stuff. And what actually changed for them was learning how to coach the business that they made. And that's why they sold that business. Um, and it was the lifestyle. So when I saw that, I was like, Whoa, I don't want, I don't want his lifestyle because he just works like a dog. I want to be able to have the impact and the income and be able to spend time with my family whenever I want, have control of my schedule and be able to build generational wealth and be generous at all times. So that's another thing I would say, look at the lifestyle of the coach you're looking into do they just work like dogs 24 seven or do they actually live the lifestyle that you would actually want? But yeah, One, anything else you want to add? No, that's perfect. That's 100%. I fully agree with that. You know, lifestyle values, you know, um, skills, um, style. I think style speaks to it as well. Do I like their style? Cause sometimes, uh, you know, I, I watched a, you know, one coach right now who's he's well known but he hammers on people when he's te teaching them. I'm like, ah, that's not my style. I don't want to, I want to be uplifting to someone. I don't want to be condescending, you know, make myself, you know, feel better or look better. I want to lift people up. So, you know, some of that stuff, you know, does grind me a little bit because I'm like, I want to be a lifter of people, not push people down so that I make myself better or feel better or look better, be smarter. Uh, they're learning the, the ropes too. So I think, Getting a coach, all of that is really, really important. So I'm excited about the online space because of the things that you can do. You can buy back your yeah. time and it's serious. It's real. It's not fake. It's not just, you know, pretty words on, on a promotion. You can literally serve people well. You can also buy back your time. You can also make great imp imp impact and great income. I think all that is, to me, is why I, we got in this space in the first place. And uh, yeah. so I absolutely love it because I love seeing people build their businesses online. I love the done for you yeah. side too, but I love seeing people who are like, I want to learn all the skills so that I can do it myself. And so I absolutely yeah. love that. And we're not going to over promise them something. We're actually going to under promise them and over deliver. So those are some of yeah. our values, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to recap those four things. So if you're just starting, you're thinking about getting an online business, you just watched this video and you're excited to start, I'm just going to recap the four things you should do. So number one, choose a niche, choose a niche in a market that people 
actually have pain in, not just what you feel like you're good at. Build your audience. Start posting. Imperfect action is perfect action. Number three, serve someone for free. Get results for them. Learn the ropes. And then four, get a mentor or a coach. Shorten that learning curve. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much the video today. Thanks for joining us. If you guys want to subscribe, we're going to be posting um, interviews like this, talking about everything from marketing, mindset, Bible, and business. Um, we're going to be actually bringing on some other um, coaches in the sphere and different niches and all that stuff. So if you guys enjoy this type of content, feel free to like the video. Feel free to subscribe. Um, join in in this community. And if you guys want to start an online business and you really enjoy our style of teaching, you enjoy this style of content, go look at the links in our bio. Um, we actually are going to have some stuff for you that you guys can start with. We, uh, we actually just finished making a niche training. We had a whole free course you guys can download. Um, we have a few other links in the bio. I don't fully remember them all, but just feel free. Go check the description. Um, check out those links. But yeah, hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And see you later.